Hello everyone, my name is Herman and here's why Swift is not just an iOS app language. I mean, sure, it is mostly used to write super creative iOS to-do apps and revolutionary AI wrappers, but that's not the point. Swift is a general purpose language, and a great one. No, really, you should learn it and we'll dive into why. But first, let's dive into some history. In 2010, Chris Lutner started development of the new language to replace the bulky Objective-C in the Apple ecosystem. Objective-C often felt like deciphering ancient runes left by aliens who were really into square brackets. So the new language had to feel modern, be type and memory safe, and have a C and Objective-C interoperability. Chris did such a great job that the language was quickly adopted by Apple, and in 2015 Swift became a free and an open source project under the Swift.org initiative with an Apache license. Surely, Apple still invests heavily in Swift development, but the community also plays a strong role in shaping the language. The future of the language and its upcoming features are freely discussed on the forums, and contributing to the language or tooling is super easy and straightforward. And here is where we come to the first misconception about the language, that is just for the Apple ecosystem. The Linux support became a thing since version 2.2 in 2016, and Windows? Nobody cares. Swift tooling has come a long way. It is definitely not the best side of the language, but it does its job and is constantly getting better. We'll skip the part about the ugly one in the family, and we'll go straight to the actual tooling. And the first thing on this list is the language server. Shortly, this is a server running on your computer, which communicates with the editor of your choice and provides those fancy completions, diagnostics, and other really cool stuff. SourceKit LSP has been around for quite some time, is cross-platform, and is well supported by all major editors. The only actual downside of Swift LSP is that you are required to build project once in a while for indexing to work. Swift Package Manager or Swift PM is a command line tool for managing your project. The project file also uses Swift, provides support for testing, writing build plugins, importing other Swift or C libraries, and lots of other awesome things. There is also a built-in formatter and linter. Everything comes with a toolchain you can download for your OS, there is also a tool called Swiftly, which is similar to Rust up for Rust and is used to manage your Swift toolchains. Firstly, Swift is not a garbage collected language. Well, not exactly. Swift implements the same automatic reference counting system, or ARC, also used by Objective-C, where the object B is deallocated only when there is no more object A that has a strong reference to B. Strong reference is usually a property. This is a perfect middle ground, since it is not a fully emerged garbage collector which could take up a lot of resources, but it still removes the need for a developer to manually keep track of objects in memory. Secondly, Swift has an awesome mechanism called copy and write, or COW. The principle is actually very simple. Imagine you have an array, and you pass it to some other function in your very complicated and absolutely necessary library. Well. In most other really cool languages, the array you passed can be mutated by the function in the library. And you can't be sure unless you check the code of what happens there. And if that happens, you will need to create a copy of an object and pass the copy instead. But what happens in Swift is that every time you pass a value to another function or library, it shares the object until it's about to be mutated. As soon as other function mutates the object, Swift creates a copy of it in memory. Otherwise, it's just not happening. This way, there are no unnecessary copies of an object in memory, and no need in making copies manually. We will not discuss every single feature of the language, but we will check out my favorite ones. Since Swift is a memory-safe language, optionals are a thing, a big one. Basically, you can't have a variable which is nil unless it's an optional type. The compiler always gives you warnings and errors if you're doing something wrong. So every time you work with optionals, it's awesome. This is mostly due to syntactic sugar and a thing called optional binding. You can safely unwrap them by providing a fallback value if the optional is nil. You can chain the statement with question marks. You can do beautiful binding with if let. Or make it simpler. Or my favorite, guard let. Guard let gives you fully unwrapped value further in the code. And if it fails, the language forces you to exit the scope of the loop or function. That helps to write more readable code and have a good error handling. Swift allows you to call C standard library functions right away. So you can even call malloc if you really want to. This way you can manage memory on your own if it's necessary, but you can also add any C library you want to the project and simply use it, writing a memory safe application with all the power of C. Another great feature of the language is its flexibility. And what I mean by that is you can use any paradigm and design pattern with it that you want. You want OOP? Probably not, but here are some classes. Prefer errors as values? Awesome, take it by using tuples. 
you can do functional, procedural, or declarative programming, which is used in SwiftUI, for example. This is a key point of this video. Outside of app development for the Apple ecosystem, Swift could be used for a variety of other stuff. It's an absolute joy to write CLI apps with it using argument parser library, do scripting and automations. You can write gorgeous backend servers with such frameworks as Vapor or Hummingbird. And there are actual companies which use server-side Swift as reported on Reddit. You can also compile it to Wasm and run it in a browser with Swift Wasm. Even embedded Swift is a thing now. With a C interrupt and some limitations such as removal of type any, you can now write somewhat memory safe applications for embedded devices. I know it's not a deal breaker for most people, but I'm excited about this because I'm actually an embedded software developer. Imagine how much troubles an embedded world could have been prevented with memory safe language. And for all of that, you don't have to use Xcode or even macOS. Though Xcode engineers probably just got offended by that because they usually downvote everyone who tells them to learn a bit more than a fancy other complicated IDE. And here we come to the main downside of using Swift, documentation. As soon as you start building something complicated using app libraries or frameworks, you will most likely find yourself on Swift forums, Stack Overflow, and tutorials from our Indian brothers. Dot close, dot button, and I'll be creating dot on click. This happened after Apple switched to calendar-based release cycles and shifted their resources to random new features they would have to implement and then release anyway. With all that in mind, Swift is a beautiful language that might and should be used in more ways than just a language for Apple ecosystem. Check out Yatora, Apple Music CLI player written in Swift I am working on right now. It's been Herman for you. Learn more about the tools you are using, touch some grass, and thanks for watching.